One of the best and most versatile tools in design software is the pen tool, or sometimes known as the Bezier curve tool. But it also isn't the easiest to get the hang of. So today let's break it down and make the pen tool a lot easier to use. So I'm going to be using Affinity Designer because, well, it's the best. But the pen tool is basically the same in most, if not all, design softwares. Some of the shortcuts may differ slightly, but for the most part, it's all going to be applicable. All right, let's get into it. So usually the pen tool looks something like this. It's usually some kind of fountain pen or sometimes it looks like a curve. But either way, you want to look for your pen tool or Bezier curve tool. So now you have it selected, you can click wherever you want and it'll create a note. Now, if you click somewhere else, you'll create a straight line between those two nerds. Did you say nerd? Not nerd, node. Oh. Easy peasy. So what else can we do? If we hold down shift, so we're on this node now, you can see because it's selected, whereas this one is just white. If we hold shift, you'll see this yellow guide pop up, which shows that we can create a straight line vertically downwards, upwards, or in 45 degree angles. So you can lock it to those positions if we wanted to do that. And then all we do is click and it'll create the line. Meaning if we wanted to, we can click, hold shift, click, hold shift, click, hold shift, we could make a nice little house quite easily. But that's only one part of the Bezier curve tool. Within that is the curve. So we can also curve these lines. So let's start again. Now, if we click the pen tool and click a point to create a node, this time, rather than just clicking, if we click and drag, you'll see that the line curves and we have these two faint points at the top and bottom here. So think of these like little magnets. One will be for the line before, which is this one, and one will be for the line after, which we can't actually see yet because we haven't drawn it in. And if you think of them as magnets, they attract the line to curve towards the magnet before they have to make their final destination where the node is supposed to be. But it'll all make sense as we go through this. Now in Affinity Designer, and I think in some other programs, if you hold control while on the pen tool, you can actually click these magnets and move them around. So now you can see that magnet theory kind of makes sense. The closer we bring it, the less the curve we have. The further away we bring it, the more it has to stretch up before it comes back down to where we want the node to be. So we can manipulate the line and curve it as little or as much as we want, or curve it in one side more than the other side if we really wanted to. So like I said, one of these magnets is for the line before and the other one is for the line after. So either we can adjust this magnet to where we'd want it to be and then draw our next line by clicking and dragging, or we could draw the line and then start adjusting our magnets. So this one you'll see is for the line before. This one is for the line after this node. So we can curve and bend the line how we want. But as you can see, as we move this magnet here, we're affecting its counterpart on the other side. So as we want to curve this line, the line before of it gets curved less or more because we're moving both of them. So ideally, if we wanted to move one of these magnets, but not the other one, what we can do is while holding control, if we also hold alt, you can grab one side of the magnet and not affect the other one. So if we want to, we can create more of a sharp line going from one direction to another quite easily. Or we could even bend it across, make like a wave shape if we wanted to. Now, if we ever have a point, let's say, for example, this first one here, which has no magnets for it at all. If we head up to the top, we can actually add some magnets using one of these tools. So if we convert it to a smooth, you'll see that two magnets turn up and we can move this and affect the lines however we want. Or if we hold Control and Alt, we can affect one of the magnets without affecting the other one. So now we've shown how we can curve the line and use the magnets to affect the curves before and after each node. But what if we wanted to create a curve and then a straight line? So let's do that. Let's create a curve. So if we click Create a Node, click another one, create a curve. Now, if we wanted to make a straight line to the bottom here, and if we click now, you'll notice that we have that curve because this magnet is pulling the line towards it. We don't want that. Instead, if we click on this node, you'll see a little minor symbol turn up. Once we click on it, you'll notice that the magnet after has disappeared, but the one before still exists. So now if we click somewhere, we'll create a straight line, which also has no curve to it and also no magnets. So now we can create straight lines again if we want to. And then if we click and drag, we can create a curve, click back on the node that we just had and we can create another straight line. Now we can also create a shape using these nodes. So on the node that we've got, if we link it back to the very first node that we made, we'll now create a shape of all these lines. 
and this is a movable shape and a re-editable shape as well. So if we wanted to, and this is the beauty of vector lines, is we can now move these points if we want and change how each of these lines are curved. And a great thing in Affinity Designer, which I'm not sure is in different programs, is we can actually drag the line and curve it how we like, rather than create magnets if we needed to. But if we want to, we can control using the magnets rather than dragging the line if we like. But for sure, the pen tool is something that takes a lot of practice. And it's not something that you'll just get good at straight away. Some people will, I guess, which is always the case in certain things. But it is something that takes a lot of practice. Like even that, try to draw a heart. Doesn't look quite like a heart. I can always drag this line, make it a bit more curved. Something like that. I don't know. We'll kind of go with this for now. But we can always re-edit these to make it how we want it to be but doing things like this is all good and well but putting in the time to be able to use this and tracing over images is definitely something that will help when you're trying to master the pen tool so two things i would highly recommend while trying to get better at the pen tool one of them is especially in affinity designer it's what's called the rubber band mode if we head up to the top here we've got this rubber band mode so if we turn this on, now when we click somewhere, you'll notice a preview that follows your mouse. So wherever you're going to click next, you can preview where that line will be. And now we can see, depending on where we're going to make our next node, where our line will be. So this preview helps you understand and helps you guide where you're going to put the lines. And it goes on and on and on. So this rubber band mode is definitely something that I wish I had when I learned, but I didn't. But now it's something that hopefully you can use. The second thing that I would highly recommend is what's called the Bezier game. This game basically teaches you how to use the pen tool to create a few different shapes. And it explains it all within the game itself. So it does start off by teaching you the buttons. So if we click here and click on the next node and then down to the bottom. So each shape that you have, you have a specific number of nodes you're allowed to use. So here it tells you to hold shift like before. If we wanted to create a 45 degree angle and then a straight vertical line and then a straight horizontal line while holding shift. Again, teaching you how to create the circle and creating our magnets to make it a full circle. Now it is something which, say for example, we don't quite make it we're not able to make the line, but it does get you to try over and over again. And as we go through the tutorial, it uses the guidelines to help you understand how far to use these magnets. So through the tutorial stages, it gives you guidelines on how to create each of the shapes. And the idea behind it is to try and use as little nodes as possible to create the shape. So here we start off here and then we go across. So we've got 14 nodes to make this car shape. So you go around so it can help you by practicing making all these intricate shapes and practice using the pen tools in different scenarios. And you can just hit Control and Z to undo. You've actually got some shortcuts at the top to help you remember what they are. So if you want to test your skills with the pen tool, it's something that is really good to help practice using it. And I would highly recommend trying it out. I'll leave the link in the description below, but it's definitely something that I used a lot just to get practice to make myself better at using the pen tool. And it's definitely something in which you can try and use as little nodes as possible to create what you're trying to create. So hopefully this helps you make sense of the pen tool and ways in which you can practice to make using it a lot easier. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments below. If you want to follow me on any of the socials, those are in the description below. And as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.